Hey, welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. I'm Kara, and today the tiny friends are having a group chat about missing those hugs. So we're using virtual friends, love letters, tiny friends, scripty bubble sentiments, simply sentiments, all the clouds, the outside in stitched rectangle, the largest one, and the laptop from the pop up desk. Cut from the holographic 2.0 cardstock, black licorice, and white cardstock for those bases. All right, with some Bristol Smooth cardstock and some archival jet black ink, I'm going to stamp the monitor from Virtual Friends all around. I'm creating a background here. So I want to start with my largest image, and then I can fill in the rest with the smaller ones. And once I have these monitors where I want, I'm now going to take the cell phone from Love Letters and stamp that all around. I was so excited to find out that the tiny friends fit into that cell phone as well as the monitor. So that was a fun find. Uh, so, of course, that's going to be on this card as well. Putting the little buttons onto the monitors that comes in that set with Virtual Friends. And then I still want to fill up a little more of this background. And so I'm using the heart from Simply Sentiments. It's kind of a stylized heart, and I thought it looked pretty good here. Just kind of dispersed among the different devices. And I'm keeping that center fairly empty because the sentiment is going to be in the middle. So I didn't need to fill that up or want to cover anything up with a sentiment. So just kind of looking at it and seeing where I can add another heart. I don't want it to be too busy, but I do want those hearts to kind of scatter around and just kind of look balanced. All right, well, here are our tiny friends, and I'm taking a piece of paper as my mask and just putting it at the bottom of those screens and stamping out all these little people. They kind of look like those little people, right? Those Fisher Price little people. Uh, not when I grew up. They were a lot more, <laughs> they look like pegs when I, when I was a kid, but they look more like this now. Anyway, I got to stamp every one of those people on the stamp set on this card, and uh, except for the cat. I'm sorry, cat lovers. I I chose the dog over the cat, so <laughs> so this little boy has his dog with him, but otherwise everybody was included on the card. There's a lot going on in this background, so the scripty bubble sentiments is a great bold sentiment to be seen <laughs> among all of these people on their screens. Now I'm preparing the laptop to hold the first part of the sentiment. And this is a fancy laptop, let me tell you, with this holographic metallic look to it. So taking out all the little bits. The sentiment is a compilation of other sentiments, and I'm using Lawn Fawn's Blue Jay ink to stamp that out. I'm just partial stamping by taking my block and putting it partially on the ink pad and then stamping down. I started at the bottom so that I knew what kind of room I had in my screen space. The word your was from all the clouds and miss was from Simply Sentiments and so was the I from I'm sorry in Simply Sentiments. All right, I'm going to give this laptop some black keys and that way it'll show up nice on my card. And there is a score line so you can fold this laptop. I'm just reinforcing that with my bone folder and pressing it down. And now I can put that sentiment on the back, but I also created one out of the metallic cardstock to put on there. So when you fold this laptop down, you see the lid of the laptop instead of this uh, white back. So I just trimmed that down a little bit so that it wouldn't be too bulky around the edges. I'm going to glue that little screen onto the back of the laptop and glue that all onto the main part of the laptop. 
And I want to get this centered straight. You see my black was not so straight, but that's not important because that you won't see. But you will see the top of this laptop. All right, so now starting to color the background. I'm using the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers, and this is deep blue. I'm just going to use a little water to spread it around. I wanted some variation in this background, so it's uneven. There's, It's kind of blotchy in a way, and that's the fun part about watercolor. When I was deciding what my color scheme was going to be on this card, I thought, well, a blue background. But a solid blue background just seemed kind of flat. And so I thought, well, I'll use brush markers and that way I can get kind of a variation here. Now you could do the same thing with ink blending with Distress Ink and then cut out those images and just glue them onto the page. But I wanted this to be all one layer. The color flows really well with a paintbrush on Bristol Smooth cardstock. Not every cardstock, some of them. I can just color on there and that ink is going to stay put, but with this Bristol Smooth cardstock, it moves fairly well. Actually, it moves very well. It's kind of fun, fun to move it around, and uh, I, I do like this variation from the dark, splotchy look to the lighter areas. Now, I only did one layer on this background, but the nice thing too with this is that you can add layers and give it even more texture to the background. All right, here that background is all done, and it did not warp too bad, even though I used water on not watercolor cardstock. But now I'm going to put in the backgrounds of the screens. And my color scheme here is this kind of spring green and a light pink and orange. That keeps this card consistent. So it's going to be, it's busy. But if I keep these colors to a minimal palette, then I feel like it, it keeps it a little more cohesive. So here's that light pink color. The actual colors are pale green and light pink. The other color is just called orange. So I took some of the marker and colored at the bottom of the screen and took water and pulled it up to the top of the screen. Then I used the same markers to color those hearts and I just made sure that I had them balanced across the panel. I'm only using four colors on this card except for neutrals and so I know that there's going to be colors that are going to be next to each other but that's all right. All right, so now I'm using light gray and just coloring in the monitors. These brush markers cover very well and they seem to be forgiving too uh, as I color in the small areas. So now that I have all of the devices colored in light gray, I'm coming back in dark gray and just adding a little mark and then coming back with that light gray and blending it out. So you can either blend with the markers themselves or with water. So using the markers in this small area just to just give a little bit of shading. I'm not worried too much about shading today on everything, but wanted to give a little depth to these monitors. Now for some skin colors. So I've got a variety of neutrals here. Um, this one is beige. <laughs> and so starting with a beige, and this one is called uh, flesh color. <laughs> I don't know who determined that's flesh color, but all right. And it seemed a little yellow to me. I added a little bit of pale pink in there, and she has pale pink. So next we have mid brown, and I'm going to combine that with a little bit of beige, blend that out, and on some of them, I just use one color. So this guy is going to be all mid-brown. And then some of them I blend together. 
like this lady. She's going to be mid-brown and I'm going to bring in that beige again. Kind of blend that out a bit. I'm not worried too much about shading everything. I'm just adding color. And I like coloring book figures. Right, this guy decided to darken up a little bit. And now for that dog. So I have beige and I'm going to use that mid-brown to give him a little bit of shading so that he's not so flat. I've decided that this is my brother Scott and his yellow lab Ruger. This must have been a few years ago because now he has a husky named Milo and uh, probably doesn't have that much hair anymore. Shh, don't tell him I said that. Okay, well, on to hair colors, and I used the same markers, but I also added in uh, a black and a dark brown, as well as a yellow and a pale yellow. So that was pale yellow with the mid-brown, and here's mid-brown with black, and then black with some mid-brown. So just taking those same colors and using a different amount for each of them and that gives me a variety of hair colors well here's that actually that's that flesh color and then this is yellow and then I kind of temper it back down with that flesh color and now this girl she has light pink and I wanted to give her just a little more highlights so I put some regular pink in there and then blended that in with the light pink again so I was watching the Create With Us with Kelly and Jen the other day, and that's on Lawn Fawn's Facebook page if you want to go check it out if you haven't seen it. But uh, they did a live class, and it was a free class. It was, it was so fun to watch, and a lot of ladies, a lot of people on there. I'm sorry, men. There were a lot of people on there. <laughs> um, but I learned so much. So I used archival jet black ink on this card because it's safe for watercolor. But I learned from that live that Lawn Fawn's jet black ink is also safe for watercolor. I always use it for Copic markers because it is Copic friendly, but now I know I can use them for both. So it's always fun learning something new. Well, as you can see, I'm coloring their clothes and I'm using those same colors that are on the card, except for this blue. This is cornflower blue, and I'm lightening it up so it kind of looks like jeans. So they've got little jean skirts and jean shorts. So just adding a little bit of water and dabbing it off with my paper towel. And I'm also lightening up some of these orange clothing articles as well. Not all of them, just, just some of them. They must have all talked before the Zoom meeting to make sure that they coordinated their outfits. So now with the background ready to go, I'm going to color in the scripty bubble sentiment here, the hugs. I'm adding the color with light pink and then I'll take my paintbrush and just a little bit of water, move that around. The scripty bubble sentiment set is great for uh, making bubbles out of the words, but also they just look great on their own. Well, I wanted this to be a bit darker, so I'm adding a little bit more color from the marker. Decided it just, I don't know, I thought it needed to be just a little brighter. So I added some of that regular pink and then blended that in with the light pink. And, and that kind of gave me a little bit more oomph to the sentiment to make it stand out a bit more. Well, we certainly have been relying on the internet at our house. My husband is now working from home and my daughter is taking her college courses from home. My mom is stuck at home. We're all kind of stuck here together. So it is so nice to connect with other people through social media and even crafting together this way. Well, here is the rest of the sentiment on the little laptop. So I'm going to add the hugs to some fun foam and just glue that down with my Lawn Fawn glue tube. So I just die cut that out with the coordinating die as well as the hugs word there. So I'm adding this to my foam that just gives it a little bit more dimension 
pops it up off of that busy background and I'm layering it with this laptop so they're a little interconnected. But before I adhere that down, I'm going to adhere this panel to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card with some tape runner and position it in the center of my card. And now I can glue down my laptop and I'm just gluing it down on the bottom. I'm gonna keep the lid free so that I can open and close. Now I'll adhere the popped up hugs word and this card is all done. Well, I had so much fun making this virtual tiny friends background and I hope it inspired you to make a colorful stamped background too. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.